Hello, how are you today? Well, it looks like uh, my hair's getting a little bit longer and crazier every day. I guess uh, if I were going to write a poem about these days, I'd probably have to write something called In the Days of No Barbers. Well, so in, in addition to my usual poetry-themed question, I'll just ask you, how's your hair looking nowadays? Some of us probably uh, have some shears at home to cut it real short. Others might be getting pretty wild. Anyway, just curious. Um, so for today's poetry selection, I've been looking for something from Seamus Heaney. Um, and I've settled on one that is a rather simple uh, childhood memory. Um, this isn't uh, overly dramatic. This is the kind of... Uh, Remembrance that almost any kid could have. Uh, just a, a, a simple routine thing that they did in their summers. Uh, the poem is Blackberry Picking. And it's exactly that. It's about picking blackberries. So I'll uh, read through it in just a moment. And then I'm going to ask you to be sure to read it yourself. Um, and then comment. There's not much that I need to explain here, I think except um, just a few little points. So he makes reference to Bluebeard, Bluebeard's hands being sticky. Bluebeard is a uh, fairy tale bad guy, uh, killer. And so when they go and they pick the blueberries and they get juice all over their hands, they refer to their hands being like Bluebeard's hands. Um, like reference to the fairy tale has his hands would be drenched with blood after a killing and these kids hands would be drenched with berry juice after a berry picking um he makes reference here to a buyer a buyer b-y-r-e is a shed um more specifically usually it would be a cow shed but in this case i think um it's just a shed and in which they are storing their berries after they pick them I guess it's probably worth knowing that uh, when blackberries grow, they're usually red when they're not ripe enough and they turn darker. So that's what he's referring to when they ink up, they turn blacker. He knows they're ready for picking. So that's pretty much all you need to know, I think, to understand the poem. I'm just going to go ahead and read it. Here we go. Late August, given heavy rain and sun for a full week, the blackberries would ripen. At first, just one, a glossy purple clot among others, red, green, hard as a knot. You ate that first one, and its flesh was sweet like thickened wine. Summer's blood was in it, leaving stains upon the tongue and lust for picking. Then red ones inked up, and that hunger sent us out with milk cans, pea tins, jam pots, where briars scratched and wet grass bleached our boots. Round hayfields, cornfields, and potato drills, we trekked and picked until the cans were full, until the tinkling bottom had been covered with green ones and on top big dark blobs burned like a plate of eyes. Our hands were peppered with thorn pricks, our palms sticky as bluebeards. We hoarded the fresh berries in the byre, but when that bath was filled, we found a fur, a rat-gray fungus glutting on our cash. The juice was stinking, too. Once off the bush, the fruit fermented. The sweet flesh would turn sour. I always felt like crying. It wasn't fair that all the lovely canfuls smelt of rot. Each year I hoped they'd keep, knew they would not. So there you go. It's a remembrance of uh, picking blackberries um and it seems each summer they make the same exact mistake uh they pick the berries um and just kind of cross their fingers and hope that they'll preserve and they don't and they get spoiled by uh some mold or fungus um so there's a lot that one could reflect on here whether you have a uh, uh, experience picking berries in the wild or what kind of routines you often do with friends in the summertime, but I'm just going to ask you one simple question. Have you ever made the same mistake twice, or maybe more than twice, 
It looks like these kids did it every summer. Um, what lesson could I take away from this? I don't know. How about um, when life gives you blackberries, learn to make preserves. <laughs> All right. We'll see what you get out of it. Um, and I'll speak to you again the next time I have a poem. Have a pleasant day.